The Pixel 8 and 8 Pro have been out for a while now and it had myself and Jordan thinking about some accessories we simply can't live without and that you might want to hear about. Before we show off some super cool accessories, how about you hit subscribe for the channel? It'll mean a ton to us here and it's absolutely free, which means you can leave any time you like, but I want us to be friends. So go ahead, hit subscribe, join the community and let's see this channel grow into something special. Thanks Damien for kicking that off. He is right, we do have a lot of Pixel accessories to show you and since we're two very different kinds of users, you're going to get a good mix between practical everyday accessories and some that are over the top but definitely make the Pixel experience feel special. Since almost every user out there buys a case of some kind first, we're going to start there and my recommendation is a bit out there with the carved Live Edge case. If you know me, then you know I love interesting materials with a gorgeous design and the Live Edge case is probably the most unique pixel case on the market at this time. I've been using them for quite a bit over the years and honestly I just love how it makes my device stand out from the rest. The Live Edge case uses a rubber frame as a base, then combines burl wood which always has a unique grain associated with it and live resin with an assortment of colors or materials mixed in to give it this distinctive look. That's an oversimplification of the process to say the least, but the end result is a truly one-of-a-kind case as each one has so many handmade elements to it. There are a few features like the inclusion of MagSafe, which is a nice touch, ridges on the side to help with grip, and there's metal inserts for the buttons that give it a satisfying click. Probably the only downfalls are the bulk that's associated with it, not to mention live resin can be more prone to scratching than hard plastic, and the biggest barrier of them all is the price. For $189, it's definitely not affordable and really only for those that will truly appreciate the beauty of the natural materials, but if you're looking for something much more practical, Damien's recommendation will have you covered. So ordinarily I'd use a Pella case, which is an environmentally friendly option for a Pixel phone, but this year I actually wanted something a little bit different. And in my opinion, Spigen offers the best value for money, at least in terms of smartphone protection and bang for your buck. I picked up the firm's ThinFit case this time around. It's one of the only cases that I've found fully protects the camera bar on the Pixel 8 and the 8 Pro, but it doesn't add locks of bulk while doing so. The soft rubbery frame around the edges of the display I think is great for grip. Also, it has a marginal lip around the earpiece, so you should hear people better and it fits and plays nicely with lots of screen protectors. I think also it makes it easier to slip this case off and take my pixel out to clean it which something is you should, probably should do quite more often than you're doing. One nitpick I would have is that the button covers are not made from a different material. I would love to have seen those made out of metal or something similar, which you can see from some of Spigen's other cases in their other lineups. I think though for a sub $20 case it is practically perfect though. Next up, let's talk about gaming accessories, and I know, I know, you shouldn't game on a Pixel, but as a full-time user, I'm gaming constantly. Not only because I enjoy playing games like COD Mobile, Dead Cells, or PokeMMO, but it's a good way to push the device to its limits so I can keep tabs on the performance. Because of that, I actually upgraded recently to the Backbone 1 gaming controller over touch controls, and it's really a night and day difference. I'm using the PlayStation variant specifically, which has such great hardware aesthetically, and with the feel in the hand. Everything from the buttons to the analog sticks to the triggers feels pretty close to an actual PS5 controller, plus the retracting mechanism makes it super portable. On top of that, the Backbone 1 has a lot of extras like vibration feedback for games that support it, pass-through USB-C charging, and something a bit more rare these days, a 3.5mm headphone jack. There's more than just good hardware here as well, you do have to install the Backbone app which will enable screen recording and screenshots with the physical buttons, allow you to install firmware updates, and more importantly, serves as a marketplace of sorts where you can easily access all your games across the Play Store and various game streaming platforms. But the main reason I really like the app is because it curates a large portion of Play Store games that specifically have controller support so you don't have to go searching for yourself. Again, it is a bit pricey at $99, US but if you you like this and want a cheaper suggestion, Damien's pick might help you out here. So I have to say I've not really been a huge mobile gamer since picking up the Steam Deck OLED at the turn of 2024. That said, prior to that I've used the Bluetooth GameSir X2 controller since Stadia was a thing, yes. Those were the days. The way that this turns your phone into a mini Nintendo Switch I think is super cool and the button layout for me is almost perfect. I wish the triggers were a little deeper like an Xbox gamepad but overall I think it's a really great way to get into mobile gaming or enhance your experience with mobile gaming. When I play services like GeForce Now the Bluetooth connection has never really let me down and while there is no rumble feedback something I would have loved to have seen it's still exponentially better than using on-screen buttons or a weird claw grip when you're doing so. There is a USB-C version of this device 
device available now, but I've found that not every port on every single phone that I test is in exactly the same position. So Bluetooth is absolutely fine for me. And I think it's the perfect companion for emulators if you do want to play classic games, something I do quite a lot. So I often just stuff this in my bag on my satchel, but I don't have enough room for a device like the Steam Deck. I don't think it's the cheapest accessory for you, Pixel, but if you like to game on your phone, I think it's a good product to have with you, in my opinion. Continuing with our favorite Pixel peripherals, it's time to talk earbuds, and we have two really good recommendations here, neither of which are the Pixel Buds, surprisingly enough. Don't get me wrong, the Pixel Buds are great software-wise, but I personally can't stand the fit. I feel I have to jam them deep into my ear no matter what earbud tip size I use, which really made me realize comfort is my number one priority. For that, I'm going with the OnePlus Buds 3. Not only are they super cheap at 99 US dollars, but more importantly, they are so comfortable. I don't know what it is, but something about the ergonomics fit my ear quite well so I don't have to shove them into my ear canal. They just sit there perfectly and then seal with no hassle. All other features are icing on the cake. There's capacitive touch controls to change the volume, change modes, or the song you're listening to. It offers basic modes like noise cancellation and transparency mode that don't particularly stand out but work well enough for my needs. And the Hey Melody app offers a lot more features like the ability to customize EQ settings or gestures. You could turn on various software modes like low latency gaming and 3D audio as well. So overall, I find the OnePlus Buds 3 to be a pretty decent package for the price. Personally, I've flipped between the OnePlus Buds 2 Pro and the Nothing Ear 2 for almost a year now, and it is tough to decide between these two. I know Jordan has his own preference, but as much as I like the Google Pixel Buds Pro for their functionality and the functionality that they offer, the sound for me is just not quite there. In my opinion, I think the Pixel Buds Pro sound quite crunchy in comparison to the Nothing Ear Buds. Even with some EQ tuning of Google's first party true wireless earbuds, Nothing's offering does sound a lot better to me, at least from a default tune perspective. Sure, we'll get an updated or refreshed pair of these earbuds from nothing in the future but i just like to stick with these for the foreseeable the anc is solid the sound profile is so much better than the first gen which were pretty trash all things considered and the cohesion with android is another huge bonus using the nothing x application which you can download from the play store to tune your audio experience is super simple and perfect for people who might not be confident when using an equalizer the personalization for anc and that personal sound profile for a, another custom eq on top of that has super neat additions to the package. Uh, the Nothing Ear 2 are far from the best audio product that I do own, but I think they're the best that I have in my pocket every single day. For our next category of accessories, let's talk about charging. As we all know, charging bricks aren't included in the box anymore, and if you're looking for a replacement, one of my favorites as of late is the Anchor 2-in-1 wall charger slash power bank combo. I'm pretty weak for aesthetics, so naturally I'm drawn to their color options since they match the base Pixel 8 Pro colors almost perfectly, like the mint version that I have here, for example. More importantly, it's a great charging accessory too. Not only do we have two USB-C ports to charge multiple devices, Devices. It features 45 watt fast charging when connected to the wall, which will easily charge pixels at their maximum speed or something more powerful like a MacBook. As mentioned, it doubles as a power bank with a max output of 20 watts, and at 5,000 milliamp hours, it almost has enough capacity to fully charge a Pixel 8 Pro. For me, this is such an interesting charging accessory, which is why I'm happy to recommend it. It's great for commuters, convenient when you need it, and practical since it charges the battery bank while plugged into the wall, so you don't have to go out of your way to make sure it's charged up. So I use a couple of charging systems for my Pixel phones. The most important to me though is the second generation Google Pixel stand, which has been around for a little while now. This is easily one of my favorite Pixel products in recent years. And I charge almost every smartphone, not just Pixels, that I do test or do use wireless charging with this particular stand. For me, the extra features added for Pixel phones are just the icing on the cake, as your device can become a mini smart display when you set it atop this charging dock. I use the quick smart home control so often that I actually forget about my Nest of most of the time. I wish it were a little bit faster in terms of the charge speeds, but I guess that faster wireless charging does defeat the purpose of this power up method wholesale. The fan can get noticeable, but I wouldn't exactly call it loud either, even after two years of use and abuse. It's a quite good value complete package on top of that. The box includes the official Google 30 watt charger and a really high quality 1.5 meter USB-C to USB-C cable, which I have used for other applications as well. But 
when I'm anywhere else, but my office that is, I love using a cheap sub $10 anchor USB-C USB-C cable. At 10 feet long, yes, I went for the 10 feet option. It's really amazing for lounging out on the couch and ensuring that my phone is getting charged and not having to worry about snagging or getting stuck behind furniture. The real reason though that I actually bought this was due to crappy hotel plug locations. You know what I'm talking about if you spend a lot of time in hotels. It's really long enough to reach across the room and it's braided as well. So it's strong enough to withstand some abuse. I throw it in my bag, I throw it in my tech kit and it stays with me, charges all of my devices and I don't have to worry about it not reaching quite far enough to reach my bed stand or my nightstand on a daily basis. Finally, our last round of suggestions is all about screen protectors. Personally, I don't like to overspend on these because I'm replacing them so often, which is why I stick with Spigen's more affordable tempered glass. They typically come in a pack for two for around 15 bucks and include an installation frame to help get that good fit. In the past, I've used them on my Pixel Fold and Pixel 7 with no issues, but it seems there are some adhesive problems with the Pixel 8 in a Pro versions. As a backup, I recommend a smaller brand by the name IMBZBK, as they're even cheaper at 10 bucks, include camera lens covers, and double their included amount of screen protectors from two to four, so you get a lot of value here. If you prefer a more premium experience and don't mind the price, Damien's Choice is also a great option. There are cheap screen protectors out there and then there's Whitestone. I can't deny that the fitting process is cumbersome and it gives me anxiety before I even go ahead and do it, but the end result is unlike any other screen protector. And I've used this particular brand on almost all of my devices for a number of years now, and it's often a one and done application process, at least for me each year, so the stress is less pronounced. The biggest draw for Whitestone though is that unlike most tempered glass screen protectors that you'll buy that can feel awful under your fingers after a little bit of wear and tear, the Whitestone dome glass is an actual piece of glass that you put on your screen. You might not actually even notice at first, but over time, the difference becomes more and more apparent how much higher quality Whitestone is compared to other cheaper alternatives. I wouldn't though recommend these screen protectors to everyone as a result of that. They are expensive and you do need to be patient while fitting them. That said, I've yet to find a premium product that I reliably use with every single pixel and enhances experience. It works with the fingerprint scanner, it works with face unlock, and it is the perfect addition to your pixel. And that, my friends, are the top Pixel 8 accessories being used by the 9to5 Google team. I know we haven't done one of these in a while, but would like to do much more of these in the future. So if there's any accessories that you think we should try out or do a full review of, leave a comment and let us know. We'll be reading every response. In the meantime, guys, I'm getting out of here to get a head start on some future Android content. This has been Jordan and Damien with 9to5 Google. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.